Hello students. Today let us learn the second part of your second chapter from Behave, the Shahnai of Bismillah Khan. This article, the Shahnai of Bismillah Khan, is an effort to understand the origin of Shahnai, an Indian musical instrument as an improved version of the Pangi, a reed instrument which was banned by Aurangzeb for its unpleasant sound. It also narrates the journey of an Indian classical musician Bharat Ratna Bismillah Khan, whose playing of the Shahnai enabled him to win national and international acclaim. Ustad Bismillah Khan was a dedicated Shahnai maestro from India. The much celebrated musician uh, was born into the family of musicians on March 21, 1916. <coughs> Ustad Bismillah Khan won many prestigious awards such as the Padma Bhushan, Padma Shri, Bharat Ratna and Padma Vibhushan and was a popular name all over the world. He mastered the art of playing the Shahnai and also had the honor of playing on the eve of India's independence on uh, August 15, 1947. In August 2006, Khan's health deteriorated and he was admitted to the Heritage Hospital in Varanasi. He died on 21st August 2006. Now let us see the chapter in detail. Emperor Aurangzeb banned the use banned the playing of a musical instrument called pangi in the royal residence uh, for it had a shrill unpleasant sound. Pangi became the generic name for reed at noise makers. Few had thought that it would one day be revived. Pangi was a musical instrument, the predecessor of Shahnai. When the Mughals ruled India before the Britishers came, there was a very popular, very famous ruler named Aurangzeb. He did not allow the pangi to be played in his royal residence because he felt that it had a shrill unpleasant sound. So, uh, any musical instrument which is um, made with reeds like uh, we have flutes, clarinets, uh, they all are uh, classified as pangi. So, pangi is a broad term for any type of instrument which uses wind to produce sound. As uh, Aurangzeb had banned all the re all these reeded uh, noise makers, he had banned pangi in his royal residence. <clears throat> no one thought that one day such noise makers, such instruments which made unpleasant sound, would be played and their sound would be uh, liked by people of the world. A barber of a family of professional musicians who had access to the royal palace decided to improve the tonal quality of the pangi. He chose a pipe with a natural hollow stem that was longer and broader than the pangi and made uh, seven holes on the body of the pipe. As the pangi had an unpleasant sound, there was a barber who belonged to a family of professional musicians and he had access to the court and he wanted to play pangi uh, in the court but he knew that the uh, sound is unpleasant and the king will not be accepting uh, that particular inst instrument there. and so he decided to uh, change the tone of that particular inst uh, instrument he uh, decided to improve the sound this barber took a pipe a pipe which has a hollow stem it was uh, longer and broader than the pangi he made seven holes on the body of the pipe and it is almost uh, similar to uh, the flute that we have got <clears throat> when he played on it closing and opening some of these holes uh, soft and melodious sounds were produced he played the instrument before a royalty and everyone was impressed the instrument so different from uh, the pangi had to be given a new name. As the story goes, since it was first played in the Shah's chambers and was played by a Nai, the instrument was named the Shahnai. The sound of the Shahnai began to be considered auspicious. 
Then the barber uh, blew air into the pipe and closed and opened. Then when he closed and opened different holes, he found that soft and melodious sounds were produced when he did like this. When the barber played this instrument in the royal court, everyone liked the sound uh, produced by this new instrument. The royal court thought that this new instrument, which is entirely different from the punky, which was considered to be a very unpleasant, uh, which was considered to be producing an unpleasant sound. So they thought that it should have a different new name. Uh, there's a story behind the uh, naming of this instrument. This instrument was first played uh, in the royal residence of the Shah. Shah was a name given to king. Mughals called the kings as Shah. As the Nai, that is the Indian term used for a barber, had played it for the first time, uh, they called it Shahnai. So the first part of uh, the word is Shah which stands for Shah and the second part uh, is Nai that uh, stands for Barber. So this instrument, instrument was named as Shahnai. The sound of uh, uh, this Shahnai was considered to be a very uh, auspicious one, very good one. It's considered to be a very good omen and so it was played on good occasions only. And for this reason it is still played in temples and is an indispensable component of any North Indian wedding. In the past, the Shahanai was part of the Naubat or traditional ensemble of nine instruments found at royal courts. You can hear Shahanai being played at many temples and at weddings. Uh, weddings. Uh, it is an indispensable part of uh, North Indian wedding especially. The Shahanai was a part of the Naubat Naubat is uh, an Urdu word and it means traditional ensemble. Ensemble means uh, that traditional uh, group of nine musical instruments. Uh, these uh, nine musical instruments uh, were played at the royal court and Shahanai was one of that Naubat. So it's placed now we can see once it was considered to be something unpleasant now it is one of those nine most important musical instruments which was uh, used to play uh, in the court of the king. Till recently it was used only in temples and weddings. The credit for bringing this instrument onto the classical stage goes to Ustad Bismillah Khan. As a five-year-old boy, Bismillah Khan played Gilli Danda near a Pond in the ancient estate of Dumran in Bihar. He would regularly go to the nearby uh, Biharji temple to see the Bhospuri to sing the Bhospuri Chaita. At the end of which he would uh, earn a big ladu weighing 1.25 kilograms, a prize given by the local Maharaja. This happened 80 years ago and the little boy has traveled far to earn the highest civilian award in India, the Bharat Ratna. The Shahanai was played at the king's court in temples and at weddings. Only these uh, few places uh, it was confined, the playing of this was confined. It was um, began to be used on the stage and stage performances uh, after Ustad Bismillah Khan uh, began to play that. And the credit for bringing that onto the stage goes to Ustad Bismillah Khan, a legendary Shahnai player. And people wanted to hear him playing Shahnai because that beautifully he plays that or he played that because he is no more now. When Bismillah Khan was five years old, he lived in an uh, old estate named Damraun in present day Bihar. He used to play Gilli Danda uh, on uh, an old uh, sport uh, which is quite similar to uh, cricket. Also he uh, would go to the nearby Bihariji temple. Although Bismillah Khan was a Muslim, 
he would go to the temple and he would sing this song chaita in bhojpuri language when he would uh, finish uh, reciting the song he would get a big ladu as reward and the weight of that ladu was 1.25 kilograms this was a prize given to him uh, by local maharaja for singing that chaita the writer says here that this incident occurred when bismillah khan was just 5 year old that he would get this ladu as a reward and after 80 years bismillah khan earned the highest civilian award in india the bharat ratna so this is the distance that he has traveled in his life at 5 years of age he would get a 1.25 kilograms of ladu as a reward uh, and at the age of 80 he achieved the highest civilian award that uh, that is the bharat ratna so you can see from where to where he reached born on 21st march 1916 bismillah uh, belongs to a well known family of musicians from bihar his grandfather rasul baks khan was the shehnai nawaz of the bhojpuri kings court his father paigambar baks uh, and other parental ancestors were also great shehnai players the young boy took to music early in life bismillah khan was born on 21st march 1916 in a family of musicians in bihar the lineage or ancestry on his father's side was full of great um, uh, shehnai players uh, we can say that bismillah khan acquired the skill of playing the shehnai from his ancestors his grandfather was a great shehnai player uh, he played the shehnai in the court of bhojpur king his father himself was a, a very a great uh, uh, shehnai player and all those skill of uh, playing uh, shehnai he learned from his uh, father and grandfather from all those people so there is no wonder that he was taken to music or he took to music at an a uh, very early age at the age of 3 when his mother took uh, him to his maternal uncle's house in banaras now varanasi bismillah was fascinated watching his uncle practice the shehnai soon bismillah started uh, accompanying his uncle ali baks uh, to the Vaish- uh, vishnu temple of banaras where baks was employed to play uh, the shehnai ali baks would play the shehnai and bismillah khan would sit captivated for hours on end slowly uh, he started getting lessons in playing the instrument and uh, would sit practicing throughout the day when bismillah khan was just 3 years of uh, old his mother took him to her parents house bismillah khan's uh, maternal uncles uncles house uh, they lived in banaras present day uh, it is called as varanasi and when bismillah khan uh, so his maternal uncles play the shehnai he was uh, quite attracted towards uh, it and he also wanted to play uh, because that beautifully they were playing that's why the young boy the small boy wanted to play that bismillah khan uh, started going with his uncle Ali Baks uh, to the Vishnu temple in Banaras. Ali Baks was on a duty uh, to play uh, the Shehnai at the Vishnu temple of Banaras. He would sit uh, for a long time uh, listening to his uncle uh, playing Shehnai. When Bismillah Khan saw his uncle Ali Baks uh, play the Shehnai, he would get attracted towards it and he would sit there for long hours listening to him uh, playing Shehnai. gradually um, bismillah khan also started learning uh, to play shehnai and he would practice uh, throughout the day he never got tired of uh, practicing and he was so captivated uh, in uh, playing shehnai uh, for years to come the temple of balaji and mangalamaya and the banks of the river of of the ganga became the young apprentice uh, favorite haunts where he could uh, practice in solitude the flowing waters of the ganga inspired him to improvise and uh, 
in when the new ragas that were earlier considered to be beyond the range of the Shehnai. For many years, Ustad Bismillah Khan remained in Banaras. Um, he would visit the temple of Balaji, the temple of Mangalamaya, and uh, would remain on the banks of the river Ganga, where he would uh, practice playing uh, the Shehnai all by himself in solitude. Uh, here, uh, we come to know that uh, know about the talent of Ustad Bismillah Khan. He was so inspired and motivated by the river Ganga, it provoked him uh, to improve his performances and uh, to invent new ragas that were considered uh, something impossible at a time in, uh, in, uh, to be produced in uh, Shehnai. Ustad Bismillah Khan uh, worked very hard and invented different uh, sounds and ragas uh, that could be played on Shehnai. At the age of 14, Bismillah accompanied his uncle to the Allahabad Music Conference. At the end of the uh, at, at the end of his recital, Ustad Faiz Khan patted the young boy's back and said, "Work hard, and you shall make it." When Bismillah Khan was at the age of fourteen, just a small young boy, he accompanied accompanied his um, maternal uncle Ali Box to the Allahabad Music Conference. After listening to his performance, Ustad Faiz Khan Ustad Faiz Khan actually was a very well known classical vocalist. Uh, uh, was very impressed on uh, his, uh, watching his uh, or listening to his performance and after his performance he called the boy towards him and patted over his back on his back and said very work very hard my son you will reach in great heights in music because you have got the talent we can say that Ustad Fayez Khan had already seen the talent in Ustad Bismillah Khan with the opening of the All India Radio in Lucknow in 1938 came Bismillah's big break. He soon became an often heard Shahanai player on radio. When India gained independence on 15 August 1947, Bismillah Khan became the first Indian to greet the nation with his Shahanai. When the All India Radio started uh, its radio station at Lucknow in 1938, Ustad Bismillah Khan started performing for uh, from there and from there he could be heard all over the country and he uh, began uh, such a player such a uh, such a performer who is often heard by the people of india he, his performance used to be there on air almost all the time ustad bismillah khan was the first indian to greet the entire nation through his shehnai when india got independence because he was the one uh, to perform this uh, perform with this uh, Shahnai of a radio to the Indian nation. He poured his heart out into uh, Raga uh, Rag Kafi from the Red Fort to, to an audience uh, which included Pandit Jalal Nehru who later gave his famous treat, twist with destiny speech. The rag that was played by Ustad Bismillah Khan on the occasion of the independence of India was Rag Kafi. He played it from the Red Fort. After his performance, the first Prime Minister of India, Pandit Jala Nehru, gave his famous speech, Twist with Destiny. Bismillah Khan has uh, given many memorable performances both in India and abroad. His first uh, trip abroad was to Afghanistan, where King Zahir Shah was uh, so taken in by the maestro that he gifted him priceless Persian carpets and other souvenirs. Bismillah Khan gave many performances in India as well as abroad. Uh, some of uh, them are very memorable, like one, uh, the one at Afghanistan. The king of Afghanistan, King Zahir Shah, really liked his performance and he gifted him uh, with many uh, many things uh, such as Persian carpets and many such things uh, that Ustad Bismillah Khan would uh, remember this particular performance uh, all through his life. Uh, the king of Afghanistan was not the only one to be fascinated with Bismillah's music. Film director Vijay Bhatt was so imp impressed after uh, hearing Bismillah uh, play at uh, a festival that he named a film after the instrument called Ganj Uti Shahnai. 
the film was a hit and one of bismillah khan's compositions dil ka khilona hai toot gaya uh, turned out to be a nationwide chart buster <clears throat> there were many other people who were uh, attracted to his shahnai music ganj oti shahnai was a name of a hindi movie it was made by vijay bhat he was a film director and he really liked the sound of the shahnai played by bismillah khan and that is why he named his movie as ganj oti shahnai there was a song in the movie ganj oti shahnai named uh, dil ka khilona hai toot gaya uh, it was composed by ustad bismillah khan and became a chart buster it broke all the records despite this huge success in the celluloid celluloid world bismillah khan uh, khan's ventures in film music were limited to two vijay bhat's ganj oti shahnai and vikram uh, srinivas's uh, kannada venture uh, sanati apanna i just can't uh, come to terms with the artificiality and glamour of the film world he says with emphasis awards and recognition came thick and fast although <clears throat> this song was a chart buster bismillah khan got a lot of success in his film but he composed music for only two films the name of those two films are ganj oti shahnai made by vijay bhat and a kannada film uh by vikram srinivasa uh, the name of the film is uh, sanati apanna ustad bismillah khan would say that he did not like the artificial uh, world of film and the glamour that was there in the film world that was why he did not compose music for many movies bismillah khan got uh, a lot of recognition and was honored with awards bismillah khan became the first indian to be invited uh, to perform at the prestigious lincoln center hall in the united states of america he also took part in the world exposition in montreal in the cannes arts festival and uh, in the osaka trade fair bismillah khan uh, performed all over the world he performed in united states of america at the lincoln uh, center hall he performed in montreal australia in the world exposition he performed at the cannes art festival and he also performed in japan at the osaka trade fair so well known did he become internationally that an auditorium in tehran was named after him tahar mosque ustad bismillah khan national award awards like padma shri uh, the padma bhushan and the Patna Vibhushan were conferred to him. Tehran is located in Iran. Bismillah Khan was so famous all over the world that in Tehran an auditorium was uh, named after him. Ustad Bismillah Khan has been awarded with the Patna Shri, Patma Vibhushan and Patma Vibhushan, a lot of such. In 2001 Ustad Bismillah Khan was awarded India's highest civilian award the Bharat Ratna with the coveted award resting on his chest and his eyes glinting with rare happiness he said all i would like to say is teach your children music this is hindustan's richest tradition even the west is now coming to learn our music when ustad bismillah khan received india's highest civilian award a bharat ratna in the year 2001 his eyes were uh, filled with a rare shining he was very happy because his hard work had been recognized and then he gave an important message to the country he told all the indians to teach music to hit their children because music is the richest tradition of india he said that even the western countries wanted to learn india's music
in spite of having traveled all over the world, Khan Saab, as he is fondly called, is exceedingly fond of Banaras and Damron, and they remain uh, for him the most wonderful towns of the world. A student of his uh, once wandered him uh, to head a Shehanai school in the USA, and the student promised to, to recreate the atmosphere of Banaras by replicating uh, the temples there. But Khan Saab asked him if he would be able to transport River Gang as well. Bismillah Khan was affectionately called Khan Saab. Although Ustad Bismillah Khan had uh, traveled all over the world, he was given so much respect and recognition, he remained rooted. Banaras, where he uh, learned music and Damran, where he was born and brought up, uh, were the two most important uh, towns for him in the world. He was so down to earth that although he had traveled all over the world, still he was attached to his birthplace. There was a student of Ustad Bismillah Khan uh, and he wondered that Ustad Bismillah Khan should set up a Shahanai school in the United States of America. He promised that he would recreate the temple of Banaras in America for Ustad uh, as uh, he would miss it. Ustad Bismillah Khan was attached to uh, River Ganga also. So he asked his student if he could transport uh, the River Ganga to America, he would uh, take the uh, position of the head of that institution there in, in United States of America. He wanted to say that he could not leave India. He was so attached uh, to India, not only the temples of Banaras, but also to the holy river of Ganga. You can say he was completely attached, attached to the Indian soil. Later, he is remembered to have said, that is why whenever I am in a foreign country, I keep yearning to see Hindustan. While in Mumbai, I think of only Banaras and the holy Ganga. And while in Banaras, I miss the unique Matha of Damra. Ustad Bismillah Khan's life is a perfect example of the rich cultural heritage of India, one that effortlessly uh, accepts that a devout Muslim like him can very naturally play the Shehanai every morning at the Kashi Vishwanath Temple. Ustad Bismillah Khan said that Whenever he visited any foreign country, he longed to see India. He wanted to return to India. And then uh, he says that when uh, he was in India, in Mumbai, he wanted to visit Banaras and the river Ganga. And when he was in Banaras, he missed his favorite drink, Matha of Damara. <clears throat> Here, the writer says that Ustad Bismillah Khan was a perfect example of the rich cultural heritage of India. His work was beyond the, uh, the religion and its barriers. Although he was a strict Muslim, <coughs> he followed the Muslim laws, but every morning he would play the Shahanai at the Kashi Vishnu temple. This shows that he did not have the barriers of religion in mind. He was a true Indian. He considered music to be India's richest cultural heritage. <clears throat> Ustad Bismillah Khan passed away on 21st August 2006 at the age of 90 after a prolonged illness. He was given a state funeral and the government of India declared one day of national mourning. Ustad Bismillah Khan had been ill for a long time and died on 21st August 2006 at the age of 90. A very eventful, successful life ended on 21st August 2006. The entire country mourned at the death of the great legendary musician. There was a national mourning for one day and he was given a state funeral. With this, 
the story of the great musician ends and that's all the chapter thanks for watching